Now that we have built our model of consumer preferences, it is time to start using it. Today, we will combine our model of preferences with our model of the budget constraint to begin studying how to model how consumers make choices and examine the effects of changes in market conditions on these choices. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to set up and solve a model of a consumer's optimal choice given a description of the choice environment that the consumer faces. Recall that when we started building our model of consumer behavior, we began with a description of how consumers make choices. We decided that a reasonable assumption about consumer choices was that consumers choose to consume the combination of goods that they like the best out of the possible combinations that they can afford. Now we have a model that describes both pieces of this statement. We use the budget line and the budget set to describe the set of possible combinations of goods that the consumer can afford, and we use the utility function as a description of preferences which tells us which bundles of goods the consumer likes better. Now it is time to put these two models together to determine the combination of goods that a particular consumer with a particular set of preferences and a particular budget will choose to consume. There are two ways to figure out how much of each good the consumer will consume. One is graphically. The second way is to use calculus. The remainder of this video will demonstrate how to use both methods to set up and solve consumer choice problems. Let's start with a graphical example using goods that are perfect complements. Let's let the x-axis be hot dogs, the y-axis be buns, and suppose that this consumer likes to consume exactly one hot dog with exactly one bun so that her indifference curves are L's with the corners along the 45 degree line from the origin. Recall that the utility function that describes this consumer's preferences is u of x and y equals the minimum of x and y. Let's now add the consumer's budget constraint to the picture. Suppose that the price of a hot dog is $2, the price of a bun is $1, and the consumer has $50 of income to spend. Thus, the consumer's budget constraint would intersect the x-axis at 25 and the y-axis at 50. If we now superimpose the consumer's indifference curves onto this graph, we have enough information to figure out what bundle the consumer will choose. Let's start to consider some potential consumption points as possibilities for the consumer and see if we can determine where her optimal consumption bundle is. We know that a consumer will choose the bundle that she likes the best out of all the bundles that she can afford. All of the consumer's affordable bundles are on, the in, are on or inside her budget line. If we consider a point like point A, this point is affordable for the consumer, but there are points that she likes better that are also affordable, so we know that the consumer will not choose the consumption bundle at point A. The same is true at point B. Thus, we now know that as long as goods are good, we can limit our attention to points that are on the budget line rather than inside of it. Two such points are C and D. Note that although the consumer is spending all of her income at these points, there are still points on higher indifference curves that she likes better than these points. In fact, the point that gives the consumer the highest possible utility will be on an indifference curve whose corner just touches the budget line. Points that are on higher indifference curves than this point are not affordable for the consumer, and points on lower indifference curves than this point are less preferred. So, the point where the corner of the indifference curve just touches the budget line is the consumer's optimal consumption bundle. How do we find the quantity of hot dogs and buns that are in this optimal consumption bundle? To do this, note two things. First, the bundle is at the corner of, his, of an indifference curve, which means that it lies on the 45 degree line from the origin. The equation of this line is y equals x. Secondly, the point is on the budget line. All points on the budget line will satisfy the equation 2x plus y equals 50. Thus, we have two unknowns, x and y, and two equations that we can use to solve for these two unknowns. 
if we use our two equations to solve for our two unknowns, we find that the consumer's optimal consumption bundle is 50 over 3 hot dogs and 50 over 3 buns. Note that this solution requires us to allow the consumer to consume fractional amounts of hot dogs and buns, which is normally something that we will assume is possible. Let's consider another case that can be analyzed graphically, that of perfect substitutes. Let's consider the case that we've been working with in previous examples, that of coffee and tea. In the example we have been considering, the consumer is willing to substitute two cups of tea for one cup of coffee. Thus, she has linear indifference curves with a slope of negative one-half, and the formula for her utility function is u of x and y equals y plus one-half x, or u of x and y equals x plus 2y. Suppose that the price of a cup of coffee is $3, the price of a cup of tea is $1, and the consumer has $60 of income to spend. Thus, the formula for the consumer's budget constraint is x plus 3y equals 60, and the budget line will cross the horizontal axis at 60 cups of tea and the vertical axis at 20 cups of coffee. Let's now superimpose some of this consumer's indifference curves onto this graph so that we can find the consumer's optimal consumption bundle. Since the budget line has a slope of negative 1 over 3 and the indifference curves have a slope of negative 1 half, we know that the consumer's indifference curves will be steeper than the budget line. What is this consumer's optimal consumption point? Let's consider a few possibilities. Let's, let's start with point A. Point A is affordable because it is inside the budget line. However, there are affordable points on higher indifference curves that the consumer can afford. So point A is not the best possible consumption bundle that she can afford. Let's consider point B. Point B is on the consumer's budget line, which means that she is spending all of her income at this point. However, there are still affordable points on higher indifference curves that she can afford, so point B is not the best possible affordable bundle either. If we continue this reasoning, we will see that the best possible affordable point for the consumer is point C. Thus, given her preferences, income, and market prices, the consumer's optimal choice is to consume zero cups of coffee and 60 cups of tea. If you think about this for a minute, this should make intuitive sense. This consumer is willing to give up two cups of tea for each cup of coffee. However, since the price of a cup of coffee is three times the price of a cup of tea, the market requires the consumer to give up three cups of tea for each cup of coffee. This is more than the consumer is willing to pay, so she will consume all tea and no coffee. You should think of what will happen in two other cases with goods that are substitutes. The first case is the case where tea is relatively more expensive than coffee, rather than less expensive as depicted here. The second case is the case in which the consumer's marginal rate of substitution is the same as the slope of the budget line. Let's consider one more example with so-called standard or Cobb-Douglas preferences. If the utility function is of the form u of x and y equals x times y, then the indifference curves are shaped like the function y equals 1 over x, and the weekly preferred sets are convex sets. If we add a budget line to this picture, we can find the optimal consumption point for this consumer. As before, let's consider a few points. Point A is one possible consumption point. This point is affordable, but it is inside the budget set. As long as both goods are good, the consumer will want to consume more of both points and there are affordable points that the consumer likes better than point A. So point A is not the point that the consumer likes best. At point B, the consumer is spending all of his income, but we can see that there are still other affordable points that are better than B. The highest possible utility that the consumer can attain will be on an indifference curve that just touches the budget line at a single point, like point C. Note that at this point, the indifference curve and the budget line are tangent to each other. Because they are tangent, their slopes are the same. Remember that the slope of the indifference curve is the marginal rate of substitution, which is the marginal utility 
of good x divided by the marginal utility of good y. Similarly, the slope of the budget line is the ratio of the price of good x to the price of good y. Therefore, at the optimum, the consumer's marginal rate of substitution equals the ratio of the prices. This means that the consumer is willing to trade good y for good x at exactly the same ratio that the market enables him to trade good y for good x. To find the numerical quantities of goods x and y that the consumer would buy at this point, we need to use calculus. To find the quantities of goods x and y that the consumer will buy, first solve the budget constraint for either y or x. Then substitute the expression that you get into the utility function. Now your utility function is a function of the quantity of only one good. We want to find the quantity of this good that makes utility as large as possible or maximizes it. To do this, take the first derivative of the utility function with respect to the quantity, set the resulting expression equal to zero, and solve for the quantity. Then, substitute your solution back into the budget constraint to find the quantity of the remaining good that the consumer will purchase. Let's work through our graphical example using the Cobb-Douglas utility function. Our goal is to find the quantities of x and y that give the consumer the highest utility possible, subject to the constraint that the bundle is affordable. First, we solve the budget constraint for either x or y. We will solve for y. Next, we will replace y in the utility function with the expression we found in step one and simplify. Now our utility function is a function of x only and the budget constraint is built into it. We want to find the value of x that maximizes this function. To do this, take the derivative of the function with respect to x, set the derivative equal to zero, and solve for x. The result tells you how much x the consumer will buy as a function of the consumer's income and the price of x. To find the amount of good y that the consumer will buy, substitute the solution for x back into the expression for y from step one and simplify. We now have a solution for the amount of goods x and y that the consumer likes best as a function of the consumer's income and the prices of the goods. We call these functions demand functions and we will examine them in more detail in the next lesson. Note that if we know the prices of goods X and Y and the consumer's income, we can substitute these numbers into the demand equations to find the quantities of goods X and Y that the consumer will buy. Let's stick with the prices and income of our earlier example. If we substitute these numbers into the demand equations, we find that the consumer will buy 30 units of good X and 10 units of good Y. The second thing that we can do with these functions is what I call the sanity check. Basically, this is a check to ensure that the relationship between the quantity of a good that a consumer buys and prices and income match our economic intuition. The first thing that we should note is that as the price of each good rises, the consumer buys less of that good. This should match your intuition regarding the law of demand that you studied in introductory economics. The second thing that you should note is that as income increases, the consumer buys more of both goods. Since the goods are good, this should match your intuition as well. In general, your solutions to consumer choice problems should pass a sanity check such as this one. If you find that you cannot generate a simple, intuitive explanation to match your solution, consider that you may have made a math error and go back and check your work. Earlier, we stated that the cons at the consumer's optimal consumption point, the marginal rate of substitution be between goods X and Y will equal the ratio of the prices of goods X and Y. We can use our solutions to the consumer's choice problem to check that this outcome is true. Recall that this consumer's utility function is U of X and Y equals X times Y. Thus, the consumer's marginal rate of substitution will be Y over X. If we substitute the demand functions for y and x into this ratio, 
we do indeed find that the marginal rate of substitution equals the ratio of the prices. This concludes our discussion of consumer choice. In our next lesson, we will explore consumer demand functions in more detail.